So we have all heard how bad genetically modified foods are, but why are they bad, and how do you know what is safe? First of all, let's look at how it's done. Genetically modifying a plant is not a new concept. It has been happening for centuries. Corn is actually a genetically modified plant in origin. The first corn crops were created by splicing two ancient grains together to produce what is known as corn today. But big food manufacturers teamed up with an herbicide company called Monsanto to help them keep the weeds from taking over their corn, canola, and soybean crops. They found that when they sprayed the plants with herbicide, the plants died. So instead of farmers finding better ways to keep weeds away, the Monsanto Corporation, the makers of Roundup, discovered a way to inject the plant with the herbicide and called the crops Roundup Ready. That meant they could be sprayed with herbicide frequently and not die. Glyphosate is a herbicide designed to manage weeds and grasses, serving as the key component in the well-known weed killer Roundup and other comparable products. While the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and various international health organizations consider glyphosate-based weed killers safe when applied as instructed, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, has classified it as a potential carcinogen or cancer-causing substance. Glyphosate is a non-selective herbicide, meaning it does not discriminate among plant types and can eliminate any vegetation it touches. Instead of poisoning the plant, glyphosate inhibits the production of specific proteins essential for its growth. Additionally, glyphosate acts as a crop desiccant. This substance is applied to crops shortly before harvest to kill the leaves, allowing the crop to dry out more quickly and uniformly. This process enhances harvesting efficiency, especially for grain crops such as wheat, barley, or oats. Since it is absorbed into the leaves of the plant, it cannot be washed away like surface herbicides. This makes it very difficult to not consume this cancer-causing toxin with your grains. Additionally, herbicide isn't the only toxin being introduced into the seeds of various grain crops, as well as tomatoes, strawberries, other berries, and leafy greens. Insecticides are injected into seeds of plants prone to insect infestations. When an insect bites into a genetically modified plant, it dies. This raises an important question. What impact does this EPA, FDA, and USDA-approved toxin have on the humans and animals that consume it? These insecticides have are considered a carcinogen, meaning this is cancer-causing as well. Moreover, the heavy metals present in these chemicals contribute to the development of many other health conditions, such as dementia, Parkinson's disease, and other autoimmune diseases. You may be astonished to learn that a significant number of baby formula brands promoted to parents for their infants contain ingredients derived from genetically modified crops treated with glyphosates and insecticides. For instance, the primary ingredient in Similac soy infant formula is corn syrup. Corn lacks nutritional benefits, and the chemicals used to produce corn syrup are as carcinogenic as those applied to the crops. Additionally, soy is recognized as one of the most commonly genetically modified crops in the United States.